Welcome, 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 my friends. Hello. <clears throat> here I am. Here we are. Uh, today's date, 25th of January, 2023, here on the Bright Light Beings Facebook group for a live stream that we call Chat with Matt. Uh, very happy to speak to any questions or requests or inspirations, prods, <laughs> directives. Um, yeah, very happy to have a chat about what's going on and how uh, you, you, yes, you could potentially um, be a more accurate representation of the bright light that you be, a more expansive expression of your divinity, of your truth. All big words. Um, <laughs> they are big words, big concepts. Anywho, um, I was just having a look. Uh, no one's written anything in ahead of time, so I am uh, at a loose end until someone inspires me. Maybe I'll take some inspiration from, because I really don't come on with any agenda, you know. I just This is a, a leap of faith for me to turn up and suggest that I'm going to talk for half an hour about something that I know nothing about to begin with. <laughs> So let's have a look. Um, here is the poster that I shared. Um, you probably can't read that, but that's me um, standing in Sanua, I believe. Yes, it is Sanua now, um, in Bali, <clears throat> out towards the mountains, the volcanoes actually, Mount Agung uh, and Bromo and those uh, volcanoes out there uh, at the rising sun across the lagoon in uh, Sanoa. I wrote, the empowered act of taking responsibility, talk a lot about responsibility, it's a sticky subject for a lot of us. The empowered act of taking responsibility is not about accepting blame or shame for what has happened in the past, which is big, right? Because a lot of people um, sort of equate responsibility with this sort of blame, sort of accountability thing. Um, and it Definitely doesn't have to be that, but rather choosing to consciously act, choosing to consciously act, that's your responsibility, to choose to consciously act in the present moment in alignment with your intended future. Basically, I abbreviate that quite often and say your responsibility begins and ends with your intent, right? Because a lot of people get very hung up and paralyzed in many ways. They don't want to act because they're worried uh, that someone else might take it in the wrong way, right? Or it might not have uh, the outcome that would be pleasant. And that's a big problem, <laughs> right? Because the truth is we can never be sure because we can't control how any of our actions uh, will be received by another including the wider society and potentially, quote-unquote, life itself or the universe or whatever you want to call that, God source universe. A lot of people get worried that uh, they'll do the wrong thing um, and be judged, right, by the highest power that there be or anything lower than that. <laughs> they'll just be judged, right, as wrong, as getting it wrong, as making a mistake, as, as you know, being inadequate, not good enough. The truth is we can't avoid that. Others will judge us based on whether others want to judge us or not. It doesn't matter how um, how skillful our actions might be. Uh, it doesn't matter how um, kind and caring we might be in how we deliver our actions and our thoughts and our words. Others are free to judge that from whatever interesting point of view they might hold. <laughs> Right. from whatever skewed perspective of the world that they might be subject to. We can't avoid that. You know, we cannot avoid that. So <clears throat> the point is, what was your intent in taking those actions or delivering those words? Where was your intention? Because that's what you do have control over. That's what you do have command over, where your intent lies. You don't have control over how it's received or even how it unfolds, right? Our intention was to successfully build a bridge, right? And the fact that we didn't manage to build a bridge successfully um, is not necessarily 
our quote unquote fault. There are a lot of different things at play. We may not have been skilled enough to build the bridge. Um, and that is something worth considering. But what was your intention? How were you aligned with love? Were you aligned with an expansive vision? Or were you trying to fool someone? Were you trying to rip someone off? Were you trying to elevate your status by achieving something that you're not capable of, right? Lots of things can look like you're trying to do the right thing, but your intention is not aligned with achieving the thing for loving reasons, right? Is your intent aligned with love or is it aligned with sort of some fear-based narrative, fear-based, what's the right word? entanglement. A lot of us act in ways that could be perceived as kind and caring, but we're doing it from fear, right? We're doing it from fear of rejection. We're doing it from fear of being um, judged as bad or wrong or not good enough. And that is still a fear-based action. Your intent was still to overcome fear, right? Which overcoming fear or negating your fears through acting against your fears is not actually a loving act. A lot of people think that love opposes fear. It does not. (laughs) Love expands out of fear, right? Love doesn't, uh, doesn't associate itself with the fears. It doesn't, doesn't worry about the fears, right? Fear worries about fear. That's the thing. Most people think, you know, and it can even look like they're doing things in a loving, caring way, but they're doing it from fear, right? And that's not loving. So intent is very, very important. And responsibility is also incredibly powerful. If you're not willing to take responsibility, you ain't going to achieve nothing. That's the truth, right? Because until you are willing to take responsibility for your actions, you are not in command of your life, right? You are simply in a react, a reactive Um, entanglement, right? You are just reacting what is being um, presented to you as the right thing to do, basically the rules. You are acting as a robot. You are following the program. If you are not taking responsibility, you are basically living via the program of what you've been told to do. You're abdicating your responsibility to some other form of authority, this is very, very common in our society. We all do it to some degree, right? This taking responsibility is not yes or no, <laughs> right? We all take certain levels of responsibility and we all have the capacity to take more responsibility for how we're showing up on the world. No one is 100% taking responsibility for themselves. Everyone has some degree of entanglement with this abdication of responsibility to various levels of authority, whether that be religious, whether that be social, whether that be um, intellectual, whether that be uh, emotional entanglement in relationships, right? We're not fully doing what we feel to do from our heart. We're not taking responsibility for acting in full integrity with our heartfelt intent. There is all, all of us have room to expand in that direction. All of us have room to make improvement with how we take responsibility and how we access our deeper level of intuitive, intentional truth. So that's the point, right? This is not right, wrong, good, bad, black, white. It is not. This is a, a an evolutionary process of digging more deeply into aligning consciously with our consciousness, right? Choosing to intentionally get more clear, <clears throat> not necessarily intellectually clear, but energetically clear to be a reflection of who we choose to be, who we're choosing to be, the beingness that we are embodying. It is a process and it is not generally an easy process to navigate. It's not complicated, right? Taking responsibility for ourselves and choosing to do our best to maintain awareness around whether our intent is flowing through into our actions or whether our actions are being overly influenced by various programs that we still carry, whether those are desires or aversions created through traumatic experiences that we've had in the past, right? The desire to avoid pain 
uh, the aversion of things that we think will lead to pain based on our history, based on our experience, whether that be in this lifetime or deeper subconscious levels of stuff left over from other lifetimes, right? All of these influences are there and we're all subject to them to some degree. And again, there's no completion to this process of expanding out of these disempowered um, influences, disempowering influences. How we can navigate that is is an ongoing process of ex of expansion, and and it requires practice. Right, it requires us to practice um, maintaining awareness and choosing to um, maintain integrity around our intent to take responsibility for living from or living intentionally from our deeper guidance. <clears throat> And we have to do that with compassion because we're all going to have moments, um, situations where we feel that we haven't done as good a job as we would have liked, right? We will all come to opportunity to judge ourselves harshly around our um, achievement of intentional living and taking responsibility for that intentional living. The problem with this concept of responsibility is it feels like we should be punished if we get it wrong, right? Because, or we should at least make amends. We should, um, what's that word? Uh, not perjury, not, um, ah, freak. No, I've lost it. Uh, atonement, atonement. That's kind of the word. It wasn't the word I was looking for. I was looking for a word that starts with P that's similar. Purgatory, I think. Going to purgatory, right? We should all somehow pay for not being good enough at, at maintaining our intent, right? Because if we're taking responsibility for being intentional, then we have to bear the consequences of not being intentional. And somehow that, and that's true, right? We have to, we have to, you know, accept that there are consequences for not being intentional, but that's not a punishment handed down by some authority, right? That is just the natural energy mechanics of the fact that we are living from a program as opposed to living intentionally. And of course, that holds us back from being our most expansive expression of joy, um, which is the the consequence, right? If we want to expand in our capacity to experience the joy of living, right? Living from love, expressing love, that's what joy is, right? The expression of love. If we, if we want that um, and we're choosing to be intentional about moving towards it and we're taking responsibility for maintaining that intention, then the repercussion of... of taking that responsibility is becoming aware of when it's not um, as adequate or as expansive as we would like. And there is, um, then we become aware of the, of the consequence, right? Which is not an extra consequence for becoming responsible. <laughs> it's, it's no worse than it would have been if we were completely unaware and if we were not taking responsibility. But the point is, once you recognize it, then you have to digest it. And this is the double-edged sword of awareness, right? Until we have awareness, then we can't change anything. Um, but with awareness comes the, um, the, the um, natural consequence of being aware is now we have to digest what we're aware of, right? Because when we're, you know, they say ignorance is bliss. This idea that if you're not aware of it, then it doesn't affect you. And that, and that is true to a degree, right? To a degree. You don't have to intellectually process it. You don't have to reconcile it in your own intellect. And your own uh, inner critic doesn't have, to, doesn't have to find reconciliation around the fact that you are aware of your shortcomings, Right? <laughs> You can be ignorant of your shortcomings and think that your shit doesn't stink, uh, but your shit still does stink. You just are ignorant to that fact. And you think, therefore, uh, everything's good, and therefore you are relatively happy in your ignorance. And again, this is playing out for all of us on different levels and layers, right? But the truth is, on an energetic level, see, the, the issue is we have to deal with this intellect and this in a critic, we have to. One of our responsibilities is is maintaining an intent to slowly but surely expand out of allowing our inner critic to overly dominate. Right, this egoic aspect of self that's always looking to be good enough, um, and that's difficult. It's difficult. 
feels like I'm talking in circles a little bit, but hopefully I'm delivering something that's going to be beneficial to someone. Um, if not just myself, <laughs> I have said many times that this, this conversation that I have with my phone <laughs> is just my, uh, my own uh, self therapy. It's like I'm talking to the friggin' mirror. It is a very weird experience. But anywho, um, it's one that I embrace because overall it's helpful for me and it feels purposeful for others. So um, <clears throat> maybe I'm deluded, which doesn't matter as long as as long as I'm happy in the delusion. What really matters? Um, it's my intent to be. It's my intent to be purposeful and helpful. That's that's the responsibility, right? Not my intent as to whether it's not my responsibility that anyone else receives it the way that I'm delivering it, because right? I'm not in control of that. Uh, 